It's Gymtastic Tuesday. you intrepid STEMtastic Tuesday challengers out there in Riffin Public Schools. Uh, Josh Behrman, K-12 science specialist, back again for another week. Uh, this will be week five, I believe, and this week we are going to return to the world of cardboard, scissors, this time we're adding a new thing in, tape. So we are going to be making marble runs, as you may have seen in that little intro. I don't want to tell you how many versions I had to do to get it to go into that little cup just right, but. And while we're on the subject of trial and error, it might be a good time to talk about something called the engineering design process. Do you think when you look at some of the things that you use on a daily basis, whether that's a refrigerator or a television or a bicycle or a microscope or binoculars or the glasses that you might wear or even the t-shirt that you wear, uh, basically anything that has been built and designed, do you think that it came out looking just like it does? I don't think so, personally. And I know, actually, that there is this process that people go through. They identify a need they, or identify a problem, and then they come up with a prototype of how to fix it. They create that prototype, then they build that prototype. But then what comes after the building of the prototype is the testing. And you might test that prototype over and over and over again. You test it, and then you go back, and you refine it and then you test it, and then you refine it, and then you test it, and then you refine it. And notice I'm making a circle. Well, that's because it is a cycle, just like the water cycle, just like the carbon cycle, just like any number of different cycles you might have learned about in school. The engineering and design process is a cycle through which we create and refine, create and refine, create and refine, until finally we have the product that we want. Now, in my case, and in your case, this week, it's going to be a really cool run to put a marble through. But it could be almost anything. It could be a car, could be a lamp, could be a pair of headphones, could be cool shoes, could be a type of nail polish, um, could be almost anything. And all of those things will go through this process until the creator comes out with the design that they like the best. So, marble runs. Maybe you want to make a run where the marble goes really far down the wall. Maybe you want to try to have as many switchbacks as you can. Maybe you want a hat to have a run that ends up in a location or starts from a location. There are a lot of different ways we can pursue this. We can't wait to see your process and to see your final results. But let's get started on what we should do. Cardboard and scissors. I think I got a better pair of scissors this week than I had the last time. So you want to cut your cardboard into kind of longer rectangles like this. You want these rectangles to be fairly even because the next thing you're going to do after you cut them is you're going to fold them. Okay, so you want to crease them. Now I'm doing this all up. And another important part of this is you want to have one edge longer than the other. Okay, so you don't actually want it to be half and half. You want to have a short side and a longer side. And if you think about it, that's so you have a nice landing platform for your marble. Now you want to make a number of these because of course you're going to want your marble run to be pretty long. So let's make a few of them. Hey everyone, we're back and now it's time to find a place to tape up 
our run and see if we can get it going. So I have chosen just three pieces and we're just gonna make a little run, just make a little zigzag. And then we are going to test our marble and see how well it goes on it. Now, I only did three pieces. You're gonna wanna do a lot more. As you remember from the, the intro, we had, uh, that one was made of six pieces but certainly you could make it even longer than that if you wanted to. But here's the trick. So you're gonna to need to get your tape. Now, I don't have a proper tape dispenser, but maybe you do, so I have to cut mine with scissors. And each of your pieces is gonna need at least two, maybe even three pieces of tape on it. And what you wanna do is take your marble run piece, and you're gonna put the tape on the shorter edge, like so. Then you're gonna take these two pieces, like this, and you're gonna stick it to the wall. Now, this is really important. Before you stick anything to the wall, make sure you have permission to do that. I could also recommend using your refrigerator, because on your refrigerator, the tape will not pull any tape off, or pull any paint off. When you put your marble run pieces onto the wall, you want to kind of fold them up again to make sure that you have a nice platform for the marble. Some things to think about while you're doing this. How will the angle of your run pieces change the speed of the marble? How can you slow the marble down? How can you speed it up? How can you train the marble to go where you want it to go? Okay, I'm going to put these pieces up and then we'll talk some more. Now we have our marble run. Let's see how well it works. Look. Well, that didn't work. Looks like I need to adjust it. Okay, here's our marble run take two. What you notice I've done is I've taken this piece and I've moved it this direction because when you saw the first time, the marble came off of the top piece and then just flew right off the edge. That's because of something called momentum. It had too much momentum and I had to slow that momentum down. So let's see how this one works, ready? Oh no! Notice I've extended this piece out and I've also changed the angle so that hopefully it will stop the momentum a little better, make it go a little bit slower. Gorgeous. Now, that marble didn't really go anywhere, but where is your marble going to go? That's the question. Mm -hmm.